Papers end up. I had it read. Referees ruined the game as the Ducks beat Oilers 4 to 3 in overtime. Double overtime. So we talked about how do you deal with anger? And they had to deal with anger because they, you can see it as plain as day that the, the, the guy was laying in there pulling on the goalie's pad and there wasn't interference. When in another game, the, the opposition goalie was behind the goal and one of the Oilers skated by and took his, his skates and he got charged with, with interference. And so, they, how do they overcome uh, with the anger? We talked about the last week. You know, it's never fun to lose, is it? <laughs> this, I think this was after the last game. It's not fun to lose. But uh, the Oilers went out and won the next game seven to one. That's how they overcame anger with a great, a great win. They just put it into play, not going out and chipping at people. And and we need to learn that in life that we overcome anger with not giving up and and, and not coming back to retaliate. But coming back to, to uh, do, do our best. And so that, that was a pretty neat game. But this was uh, after the last game. And uh, in the seventh game, when uh, when it went to 2-1, uh, to one, and you can see when they were rejoicing, they are pretty happy. The Ducks were pretty happy. Uh, they were just piling on there. I always said I never want to play football because if I score a touchdown, they all jump on top of you and I get claustrophobia. <coughs> you ever thought you'd be the bottom of a pile? When you guys get off me, the poor having fun, we're cheering. I'm, I'm joking, I'm, I'm drowning, I'm under the pile. Anyways, they, they, they here they're just standing up and pretty excited. There's the others. <laughs> How do you handle so this week we have to handle grief? Not just um, overcoming anger, but we have to have, have, handle grief. That says it all. You know, our great player, if you're a Calgary fan, fan, fan just please per, 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 uh, uh, put up with me for a few minutes because there is a point here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Connor McDavid, uh, you can see it on his face. And uh, you know, it gets, it's pretty sad to lose. Uh, what comes now? This is Kathy Pike's little cat. <laughs> uh, uh, to me. And, and uh, playing for the Oilers, but now I think the Oilers are going to have to go out and just uh, relax on the beach. And so there's the cat. She got it all set up, figured out. She addresses him up and puts him on Facebook all the time. Uh, well, guess what? Last night, game one, the Senators beat Nashville. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't Nashville. It was uh, the Penguins, sorry. The Penguins in grade one, two, one. Ottawa takes, takes it on for Canada, so we can still cheer for Ottawa. But you can also go do your gardening now. You don't have to spend the next few weeks inside. I, I watched the news and said the Edmonton Oilers fans come to the terms with the playoff elimination. We'll get it next year. The NHL playoffs brought the city together over the past month. A few Oilers fans have been without since spring of 2006. At first, there can be the first draft to be grieving, and so they brought a psychiatrist on and said a local psychiatrist said it's completely normal to feel emotion over Wednesday's loss. People react quite negatively to loss. It's almost like a grief reaction if it's too severe, said Dr. Peter Silverstone, a psychiatrist professor at the University of Alberta. As part of the stages of grief, you often get angry, anger and denial and various other things people can act out. How can you tell if someone is taking it too far? Well, you look out for the fact that they're not coming back. They're not being able to, to adapt. Within two or three days, they should have fully moved past that, and if they haven't, you might want to talk to them about it. So we're dealing with grief. How do we deal with grief? Well, it's Mother's Day. What about grief? Well, Mother's Day, Emma's for the million things she gave me. Um, o, is, o means only she's growing older. Uh, T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart, uh, purest gold. E is for her, age, her eyes with love, light shining. Uh, R means right, right, she's always be, she'll always be. Um, put them all together and spell mother, a, a, a word that means the world to me. So we're looking at Mother's Day today, but what I want to talk about for a few minutes today is giving thanks for a mother still with us. We're thankful that some of us, some still have their mothers, but so many of them have gone before us. And how do we celebrate Mother's Day when your mother is gone? And I want to make this really personal today, and uh, you can adapt it to what, what you, uh, how you want to apply it. When our mother's gone, we, we give memories, share memories in church and things like that. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as loving children, 
and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering of sac to sacrifice to God of sac and sacrifice to God. We live loving, caring, and giving. And if our mom isn't there, we can do it for others. Do it for our siblings and care about them today. Uh, those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near. Still love, still missed. When we think of her mother. Here's just a few pictures. This is Janet's mom and dad. And this is when they started out in the ministry and then just a little longer. They're both gone now. And we went up to uh, spend time with them at uh, the gravesite on, uh, on Friday. So this was starting out in the ministry and then down a few years down the road. Uh, there's little Janet ready for a wedding. Beautiful but then and beautiful now. The only thing was she was being very sick that day and the little, the, the little uh, um, ring bearer was dressed like the, the groom and she was dressed like the bride and she went home crying and said, Mommy, do I have to marry Tommy? <laughs> she thought she had to marry Tommy. But there's, there, that was Janet. And this is mom, Janet, and her four brothers. This is why you can figure out which one wanted more pie. But there were her four brothers she grew up with and, and her mom. This was on her 95th birthday yes. a few years ago. And here's the whole Stiller family on 95th. There's our, our sons there. and You can see how young Sophia was there. And this is, the families continue to grow. But this is, and mom just lived for family getting together. Uh, she just, and because, you know, it's been really hard to get together after she's gone because everyone came from across Canada because mom wanted us. So they came from Ottawa, they came from Winnipeg, they came from Saskatoon, from Edmonton, and Vancouver. And everybody came to be with the family. And you know, you can look at these pictures, but I want you to think of your own pictures this morning as well. Because it's not just about us, but I, I don't have access to all your pictures. I do have access to ours. So I want to. Uh, Teach a principle here about Karen. Here's mom and uh, on her last trip to Bentley with Janet's older brother Donald. And uh, she was there, and there's her with Sophia when she was just little. Sophia had won a prize. And grandma was just a special, special person. So, you know, you do, once they're gone, it is, it's very, very sorrowful. And here's them, uh, the last time we left, Janet's two brothers and uh, sister in law. And uh, there we are in, uh, in our front yard as they were getting ready to leave. And mom never was able to come back to, to Bentley. Here's Janice Mama's young lady in the cycle of life. That was her just as a young, young gal. And uh, so all these are sort of memories that we often just talk about at funerals, but why not do them now and take time today and to think of some, and if, if your loved one is gone, take some time today to think of some memories, look at some pictures. We were there, there's that we put the flowers up there and uh, Mom's Irene Blanche, 1914 to 2013. Dad died when we first got here, a month after we got here, August Henning Stiller, 1908 to 1987. And so we went up to uh, see the gravesite. Now this is a picture of our wedding 44 years ago. That's my parents and her parents. And so you didn't think I would just show her parents. Uh, so, uh, because both our moms are gone. There's, there's when we all we were dressed up to go to church and uh, uh, you wonder who that little guy is? Uh, I wonder. <laughs> Always grinning and smiling. Uh, it kind of, kind of little Jude, our grandson, is a little bit like Grandpa. And uh, climbing trees. Uh, I, we, he wanted to build a uh, tree house. I just stuck a stick in the tree and said, well, we'll just start with this. Well, then Joel came back and he's out there. He climbed up the tree and tried to stand on the stick and he kind of flying down. <laughs> Fell on his back. And Joel, Joel said, you know, if it wasn't something he'd done on his own, he would have evolved big time. But he had to be tough because he was, he was climbing in his tree house. They had to build it a little bit better. Grandma felt bad because he wasn't outside and put this stupid tree to stick there. You know, just trying to help him see how we could make a tree house. Here's mom and dad on their 40th anniversary. And dad built that for a stone fireplace. He gathered the rocks right across Canada and built this huge stone fireplace. And, uh, but there was mom and dad on the 40th anniversary. Here's my sister on mom and dad's 40th anniversary as well. And you know, these are all memories. We have memories and pictures to remember these things. But here's mom on her 80th birthday. And that's when you saw her when we were singing. And it was so sad because she, when she got Parkinson's with Louis Watts dementia, she just went down and down and down. And you know, the wonderful thing was that God took that my dad passed away died in a, in a stroke and came back to life and been to heaven and he went and told mom, you know, around this time what heaven was like. 
And uh, she got was quite a bit worse than this, but she came to him and she heard him and he said, you want to go, it's okay. And two days later she was gone. And so we have those memories. There's that. That was at Mom's funeral. Janet made the beautiful flowers and casket arrangement and also this with Mom's picture. And so we remember, there was my mom as a young lady in the cycle of life. And think of her, just when she was young. That was just before she started having all those kids. <laughs> And she had three of us by the time she was, was 21. But you know, when you look at it, you just think of the sorrow. And you know, the sad thing for us is, uh, and some of you who live with it, some of you don't have to, but because we've been in the ministry, we've lived all our lives away from our family. The closest we ever got was a couple of years in American Camloops. But other than that, we were in Manitoba, and they were in BC, and John's parents were in Edmonton. But you know, we have pictures and good memories, and so we're glad that even though our grandkids are in Edmonton, we can get out to see them. But as we look at this this morning, uh, we remember our Mother's Day today. Let's take time to look at some of the pictures that when you go home to bring memories to your heart. Mothers and, and, and uh, um, grandmothers, some of you have grandmothers you remember, and uh, we think of our grandmothers as well. Also, we will look into the relationship that brought us into this world, and that's with our mothers. Ephesians 5 1 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Children come from parents. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And he hath given himself to us as an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet smell and savor. So we're talking about family today and well, how the scripture relates to it. I'm just going to go through just a few verses in Ephesians chapter 5 and how they relate to us. We look again and it says, as, as I think of our moms, this, this next scripture is very fitting. And it says here, Ephesians 19, speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. Janet's mom was always humming and singing and, and listening. And my mom always had a song in their heart. And I don't know, how about you? Could you have a mom that, that maybe just was, had little melodies and things, and, or things that they always said? Play not your room. Yeah. <laughs> make your bed. Did you make your? Did you practice a piano yet? I think I came up with some scheme where you could record the practice and uh, and then turn the cassette recorder on. And now I don't play piano. And then I always wondered why it was the same mistake. <laughs> you see, I was a, I was an engineer more than a pianist. Now I would give, give anything to be a pianist. All my sisters and my brother, they all play, and I don't. Well, I can still engineer things. <laughs> but that, that engineering got me a lot of water. So see, and you're speaking to yourself in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. What I've been doing maybe is on my bus. I've just been singing songs while I'm driving. Just quietly to myself so they, they don't think I'm getting after them. Most of them have earbuds, and so they're not paying attention. And then one will have an earbud in one ear, and the other one's across the aisle, and have one in the other ear. So the two, the two can sit there together and listen to something. And, Everybody's got phones and, and uh, everything on the bus, but you know, I've just been singing spiritual songs and hymns and, and just praising God, even though we're going through difficulties. We need to be praising God. So all these people, as I said, that have I've asked to pray, they're all wanting to know. When I phone them up, they say, oh, is it coming in? Is it coming in? Is it coming in? What's happening? They all want to know. And yes, it is. Yes, it is coming in. God is asking prayers for the needs of our congregation. So, you know, mom is like that. They have songs in, in their hearts and melody in their hearts. And they give thanks for all things unto God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's a, a, a lesson. As Yvonne said, her mom would take, take them to church. And, you know, like, um, you know, like so someone said, uh, I grew up on drugs. My mom drugged me to church, drugged me to school, <laughs> drugged me to clean my room, you know, a different kind of drugs. And, you know, it's sad the way things, some things are going today, but we can still pray that we go back to things that make sense. Husbands, it said, love your wives, even as Christ has also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's what God wants us to do uh, as uh, in a family. And that's what we're talking about today. Love the wives. The wives are also the mothers. And so we love them as, uh, and you know, like you buy a gift or something or a card for your wife, you say, well, she's not my mother. But she's the mother of our children. You know, and, and you know, sometimes guys have to get past that, you know, because uh, she was a mother. Like, try being the mother yourself. 
Someone said if men had to give birth to children, there would be no, no more population exposure. Because they can just take it and keep going, so we honor our mothers today. It says, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. He loved the church and gave himself for it. The surrender. People say, well, wives have to submit to their husbands. Well, if you've got a husband that is loving their wives, even as Christ loved the church and giving himself for it. If a husband's willing to love that much, it's not going to be hard for them to uh, respect what the, what, the, what the husband is doing. It's when they, they say, the Bible says you have to do this. Now do it. And they don't have to do anything. It starts with the husbands. And then he says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. How do you get spots out of things? How do you get moms, you know, like you're doing clothes, how do you get spots out? You brush them, wash them, spray a little, shout it out. No, not even shout it out. No, not that kind of shout out. Uh, I've, I've had a friend that worked in the in the Safeway for years, and he would go down the soap aisle singing, Joy, joy, my heart is filled with joy. I stand amazed in the presence. And he'd go back, sunlight, sunlight, and my soul today. I don't know why they all have those, those names in, uh, on, the, on the soap. Uh, uh, you know, like, it, it, it was just kind of funny. But so you guys shout it out with a little spray, and sometimes you just take it and you rub it together, right? How many of you have ever felt like you guys been rubbing it together? Cleaning us a little bit. Doesn't feel good. But you know, he said it's like the church, it's like a relationship. Uh, he wants to uh, sanctify, to cleanse us with the washing of the water of the word. And sometimes we feel like we're in water, hot water. Well, it works better using hot water unless you get cold power. Uh, you know, and there's the cold wash. But you know that hot water is, is, is for a purpose. And he, he wants us to be presented without having a spot. And then how do you get wrinkles out? You buy wrinkle-free clothes, right? <laughs> how do we use that? I was I learned how to how to how to, to uh, iron and, and it paid off pretty well for me because in nineteen seventy eight when Pierre Elliott Trudeau was staying in the Bay Shore Inn, and some of you heard my story, but he was staying in the Bay Shore Inn and I went down to pick up my uniform for the night shift in the, in the cooking and the gal that was there said, everybody's gone home, and I don't know how to iron. Do you know how to iron? I said, I do know how to iron. And she said, well, I got a pair of pants that have to be ironed that belong to Prime Minister Trudeau. And I ironed his pants, and somebody said I should have burned a hole in them. <laughs> but I ironed his iron. How many of you have done that? I iron, ironed the pants of the Prime Minister of Canada. Well, because I learned how to iron. How do you feel when you're being ironed? Flat and hot and shh. But what does it do? It makes it come out clean and makes it come out smooth and looking good. And that's what he said will happen to us in the church. And it will happen to us in families. Sometimes the wrinkles get knocked out and you know all the things that we go through with our families we go through because it's to help us be better. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his own wife loveth himself. Have you ever thought of that? This is a message for, for husbands today, too. We're to love our wives and we love our own bodies. And everybody loves their own body. But we need to love our wives the same way. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes, cherishes it. it, it cherishes it. Well, I'm not going to stop on that one. He likes it. <laughs> Does that work? Yeah, it stands in front of the mirror and goes, ho, oh, oh. ho. You know, they look at, at their body. And so he said, uh, we're to love our wives like we would love our own selves. Even as the Lord loves the church. Well, when we have that love, isn't it amazing what we can do? And for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. So God's saying, wow, it's all about the relationships and what God wants to do in our hearts and lives. Now, I want to, uh, uh, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh. This is a sad thing to me because people are just aren't even bothering doing it. And, and uh, there's so much divorce that it's time to start working things out. And yes, there are times when the best thing you can do is get away. But but you know, we don't want to teach that to the children today, the youth, the young adults. Let, let, let them make a commitment, a covenant, and say, I want to do the best I can do. Sometimes we just don't want to surrender. And so he said, uh, 
Though we leave our father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So marriage, father, mother, children, is a picture of the church. And so when we think of mothers today, they are part of the, and who did Jesus have? Mother Mary. He didn't have a, a biological father. He was the Holy Spirit, uh, but Mother Mary. Now, the Catholic Church has, has really elevated Mother Mary because why? A mother does these things. Think what she went through and then seeing her son, going through all that. And so as he was on the cross, he said to, to the disciple, he said, disciple, mother, that's your mother, look after her. He knew that she was going to be terribly, in terrible shape for it. And, and so he said, please, please look after her. Father, son, mother, mother, son. And then he says, nevertheless, let every one of you be in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. It's all about relationships and with children as well. And you know, you don't, uh, you don't, uh, you didn't push my dad. Uh, and I, I, I would push my mom because she laughed. And she'd say, you're not going out. And I, when I was a young, rebellious brat, I would pick her up and move her aside to go out. <laughs> but I knew when dad came home, you wait till your dad gets home. Oh, he's looking forward to seeing me. My dad this, had this thing, go get a piece of some kindling, please. When you starting a fire, you have but not where you think it's going to be started. <laughs> and it didn't hurt me at all. Well, it did at the time. But I never could figure out why they say, this hurts me more than it hurts you. The guy said, well, go ahead and take yourself, Dad. <laughs> but you know, he said that, that we're, we're to have that relationship. And that's what Mother's Day is all about, giving thanks for mothers. And I wanted to share today because I know that um, if roses grow in heaven, someone said, Lord, please pick a bunch for me. Place them in my mother's arms and tell them they're for me. Tell her I love her and miss her, and when she turns to smile, place a kiss upon her cheek and hold her for a while. Because remembering her is easy, I do it every day, but there's an ache within my heart that will never go away until we meet again. And so that's what it's saying to us today. The steps to grief are in uh, when we when we lost loved ones. Steps to grief. I want to talk about. I started with the humor of the letters, but the steps to grief uh, in grief and joy on Mother's Day. The first one is people don't know what to say when we lost a loved one. They might avoid you. They might ignore you. They might might get up tight and and, and be troubled. Uh, they might you know they, they don't know what to do, so they just stay away from you. The second step to grief is people who try to help with unbelieving comments. But at least they got out of the car. The other people drove away. And you know, you lose a child and they say, well, you can get another one. You lose a spouse, you say, get married again. And then they think they come with answers. They don't need answers. Because that reason doesn't bring a lot of sympathy. I have one uh, relative that, that when people would come up with answers like that, she'd say, well, that's not doing me any good at all. And just bouncing right back. But you know, th that's the second group of people. When we lost loved ones, uh, they're, they're having a good time. And so it's like a Valentine's Day. We try not to do anything just for couples because if you're not a couple anymore, if your loved one is gone, then you feel left out. And the same thing with on Mother's Day. So we're wonderful that we want to have their mothers. And uh, us that don't have mothers, there are probably more of us. But, but we have the memories and we can think about it. The fourth one is people who try to appear like they were close. The pretenders. And they, they come in and say, oh, I'll be your buddy, whatever. You never talked to me before. Why would you come now? And those are the ones that, are, that really take you off. And then you have to handle anger management. Because you're going like, I wish you wouldn't bug me. But they want to say, oh, we're the best of friends. They say, you've never talked to me. And then the last ones are people who care. They help. They cry. They take you. They, they let you talk. They bring food. They help. They bring cards. No answers, just love. They let you not talk, not talk when you don't want to talk. They're just there when, you, when, when they're needed. And that's what we need to be today for people that are hurting because in some of these holidays, people don't even want to come to church because they uh, don't always have something to share. But we all do. We're all here as one, one in, in the body of Christ. And I just want to uh, just end this with, with uh, I'm just going to start this song about when, when we'll be together. And then I'll just go back to that so you can see it. We know the day will come in our lifetime when we will have to say. Oh.
in the sky Or he will be such sorrow Oh, but a sorrow that will end We are given a promise That we'll be together once again
the joy that we have. And as we think of the people that have gone on, we thank you for each loved one, each parent, each mother that uh, we honor today. Lord, our parents taught us to pray and prayed for us and cared for us. So thank you, Father, for giving us the wonderful gift from your mother. And Lord, for those who have had struggles in life, Lord, we thank you that you've caused other people to come into their lives to bless them. And Father, we thank you today for all those who still have mothers and how now mothers are here for their children. And Lord, whether they remember them always or forget them, we thank you, Lord, that we don't do it for remember, being remembered, but because we love. We love like you love. So bless us today with this um, message today of uh, hope and encouragement in, in the reality of also sadness and sorrow. Bless us today, we pray. Bless the mothers across the land. And for the mothers that are struggling to be able to feed their children, Lord, we just pray and send help from the heart of people to reach out and touch. We thank you for the mothers in Mexico that, you know, as Miriam has been a mother to hundreds of people there, Lord, that they turned around to be a mother to her and to be there. Thank you, Lord, that there's a time to, to, to give and a time to receive. And so, Father, we thank you for bringing them home safely. God, may your blessing be upon us in this Mother's Day, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Get the camera, please. And as we look at the lights back on again, and we're going to go in for, uh, for our fellowship time, and there is a plan for each mother here today. So we want